What's good guys? In this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about why you should not sell your FTZ adapter, right? And maybe hold on to some of these F-mount lenses that you currently own. You're thinking about selling these F-mount lenses? You're thinking about selling your FTZ because you bought a Z-mount and you want to beef up your Z-mount lens collection? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain to you why maybe you should think twice about doing that right now. And here is why. We're going to talk about lenses. We're gonna talk about character. We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about all that today. All right, let's get ready. Fasten your seatbelt and let's rock and roll. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about lenses, the things I look for when purchasing a lens, when using a lens in certain applications. You know, there are topics of discussion when it comes to photography, cameras, bodies, lenses. The trending discussion right now for cameras is autofocus tracking, right? The trending discussion topic for lenses is sharpness, sharpness. It's the end all and that's the be all. How sharp is this lens? Oh, that lens is sharp. I have to buy that lens. It's sharp. Let's let's pixel peep. Let's zoom into the image. Let's see how sharp that you know that lens is. Perfect example of this recently, the 8512 Nikon was released. We saw a side by side of the eighty five one eight at one eight, and we did a we saw a side by side of the eighty five one two at one two, and a lot of discussion online was, well, the one two is not as sharp as the one eight. I'm here to tell you guys that when I observe a lens, when I choose a lens for a project or a photo shoot. Sharpness is not the only thing I look at. When I'm selecting a lens maybe to buy, when I'm doing my homework and I want to see what lens I want. You know, what what lens am I after now? Sharpness is one of the things I look at, but that's not the only thing. I think with modern technology today, the modern look as we want to call it today, the modern lenses. I think that we have some sort of lack of character in lenses these days. Do you agree with me? It depends on what lens, but mostly the character is lost. The imperfections are lost. And to me, sometimes those imperfections... That character that separates a lens from everybody, every other lens is so special. Sometimes that can drive the price way up. The character is lost in today's lenses. The special look. Sure, image quality, IQ is important. Sharpness. You know, when you're doing a portrait, right, when you're, when you're taking a portrait, you know, women tend to <laughs> tell me that their face is too sharp. You have to do some processing. They, want, they like that soft kind of look. Why do you think you buy a 1-2 lens? One of the reasons why you would buy that 85-1-2 and shoot it at 1-2 right it's not because of the sharpness although it's it's heck a sharp tell a sharp but that's not the only reason why you would pick up that lens it's for that look that look that you get right the one two look i did a comparison video recently with the 512 and the 518 i went out to a rolls royce dealership and I did my comparisons. I shot it at 1.2 and 1.8, both lenses. I also did a 1.8, 1.8 comparison. 
And I think that video is telling. That video displays perfectly what I'm trying to say. The one two look, the 51 2 Z lens at one two has this dreamy kind of effect, this look that, you know, one loves. I love that look. Now, a lot of times we tend to judge a photograph, a lens. We tend to judge a lens by how sharp it really is. How technically sharp. And I think we're really ignoring the fact, we're really ignoring the the uh, some of the elements that are also important, like lens character. See, some of these older F-mount lenses had character. The G 1.4 lenses, the 24 1.4. Uh, I had that lens, I sold it to a young lady. Hi, Lavina. <laughs> awesome. She's an awesome landscape photographer, Nikon shooter. I haven't talked to her in a while. I wonder how she's doing, but she awesome photographer. Anyway, I sold that lens 2414. That lens had character. The 35 1.4G. Sold that lens as well. That lens is halfway across the world. Yamen bought that lens. Hope you're enjoying that lens. That lens, Yamen, you see that it has character. It has this look. And it has that pop. Taking portraits at 35 millimeter with that lens, it has that certain look that I really like. The 35 1.4 Canon EF lens also had that this look that it's hard to explain it's just an amazing look the 85 g again great portrait lens these 1.4 lenses the f mount lenses they had this look which i think the 1.8 z the 1.8 z lenses are technically clinically almost perfect when you're talking about sharpness, when you're talking about correction, um, you know. But they're lacking that character that I was getting with the one fours, with the with the f mounts, and some of these older f mount lenses. They have this special glow, this special magic. Sure, you're not going to be as sharp at one four with these f mount lenses that you are with the new z lenses. And that is the talk of the town right now. That is the topic of discussion when it comes to lenses these days is how sharp it how sharp is that lens. But I'm here to tell you guys that that's really not all that I look at. I look at the character. Why do you think I love these old lenses from 20, 30, 40 years ago that you can buy for 30, 40 bucks? They have this. Some of them are like. They have these character flaws that make the image special, right? They're not perfect lenses. And God, they're not the sharpest lenses ever. Wide open, forget about it, you know? Soft as hell, right? However, they have this, this some, some of the lenses have this look that I like, this character. When you're doing street photography, when you want that cinematic kind of look. Some older lenses have, they produced some uh, different type of skin tones. Different type of colors come out of these lenses. I know you can, sure, you can edit it, you know, and post, sure, you know. But I think straight out of the camera what you get with these older lenses is just something special so i'm here to tell you guys that let's not only look at sharpness when you know justifying a lens purchase when looking at a lens you know here's an example of a shot i took i took this shot an amazing five thousand dollar 200 millimeter f2 vr2 lens a gem of a lens uh, this was shot on the Z9. Stopped it down to 2.8. This was shot at 2.8 on a 200 millimeter f2. 
right? You're talking about a Z9, you're talking about a 200 F2, you're talking about a camera and lens combo that's top of the line that costs way over $12,000 or a little less. But this is the top of the line combination, right? Great for portraits. I'm going to take this picture. It's technically, clinically perfect. Uh, by the way, the 200 F2 has the ultimate bokeh. It has that the character of the 200 F2, the background blur, something that I've never seen before on another lens. It has this look, this signature. That's why this lens is so special. Why do you think this lens costs $5,500? Why do you think this lens weighs so much? It's heavy. It's fat. It's nice. It's, it's uncomfortable to use. It's not light. You're going to have a sore arm or a sore, sore shoulder, whatever. But it's worth it. You know, you're going out there. You're taking pictures. It's totally worth the pain, the sweat, the tears that you go you go through. But at the end of the day, the results you get with the 200 F2, when shooting portraits, when shooting whatever it is you're shooting, it has this look. Z9 200 F2. Let's bring in the other shot. This was taken with a 20 or 30. I think I want to say a 30. No, what 30? Yeah, 30 year old 180 millimeter 2.8 AF lens. Pick one of these guys up for what? A few hundred bucks? Three, maybe four hundred dollars today. Not even AFS, AF 180 millimeter AF lens, right? Shot. This, this image was shot at f4. Stop down just a little bit. I used a D3X, a camera that's 14 to 15 years old today. A combination you can pick up for less than 1500 today. You're talking about two different, you know, camera combos here. One that would cost you $12,000 plus. One that will cost you $1,500 plus. Let's zoom in here. Let's zoom into both images. You can tell that the 200 F2 is, it has its special look, yes. It's technically, clinically perfect. Just look at that. And it has its magic. And by the way, this was taken two different uh, time of days. One early morning, one afternoon. But I want you to see, I did this on purpose because I wanted to see how time of day and direction of the sun, direction of the light, can make your image much better. As you can see, the 180 millimeter sample is taken early morning. The sun is coming from the side. You get more of dimension to your subject. This example here, although it's not the perfect example of what I'm trying to tell you, because the 200 F2 is a lens that has a lot of character that's unmatched. I guess what I'm trying to say with these examples is that you have a lens that's clinically, technically perfect. And you have a lens that has a lot of, somewhat of some imperfections. It's not the best lens in the world. However, it, it holds its own. It doesn't cost too much money. It has its own character. All right. Let me flash the 2.8 version of the same picture. Because right? I took a 2.8 version here. But if you slap on a Z, let's say you slap on a, uh, what, 24-70 f4 kit lens on a Z mount S lens. It's going to be sharp. It's going to be great. But it's going to lack that character. It's going to lack a lot of detail that I look for. When I say detail, I don't mean sharpness and detail and sharpness. I mean other factors that make the image so special. And this is really relevant when you're, when you're doing street photography. You want to capture the character of the scene. And sometimes lenses will help you do that. Sometimes you know, shooting wide open, having things, objects, people in the foreground will make your scene. And how the lens renders those out of focus areas is the lens contrasty, is the lens less contrasty, you know, micro contrast, all that stuff. Make an image what it is. We, we a lot of times we talk about the film look. We want that film look, that cinematic look. 
I know the uh, art of photographer, Ted Forbes, just put out a video on a lens. I forget the name of the lens, but he's talking about you shooting this lens on a Leica. He's talking about how cinematic the images look and the character of the lens. You know, spot on. So some of these lenses that don't cost a lot of money these days, you can pick these old F-mount lenses up. You can, you can acquire this this character that's that's really special. So don't sell. If you're thinking about selling your F, uh, FT, FTZ adapter and selling some of the G lenses that you own, think twice about it. Because if you love photography, you'll love what you get from these older lenses. You know, you just have to look at it in a different way. You know, again, like I said, we we talk about sharpness all the time. We pixel peep. Oh, this is better lens because it's sharper. Not necessarily. This lens is not a better lens because it's sharper. Not. I don't think that's true. Sharpness is not the end all and the be all for me. And then there's two different types of sharpness. It's hard to explain what I'm about to say. I, I Leica has this type of look. This when you Leica has this quality to the sharpness. When you zoom into a Leica image, some of the lenses, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the lenses they render a sharpness, a detail to what you're looking at. Sometimes you see it in the clothing, like the quality of the clothing, the folds, all the little details in people's clothes. You see it with quality lenses. Zeiss has this character. Uh, Leica has this character. Expensive lenses. The 200 f2 that I just showed you, it has that quality of image when you zoom in. It has that quality sharpness. The 300 2.8 has that same character. Some of these expensive, more expensive lenses, they're sharp, but they show so much detail. And the detail they show is of quality detail. You can get a lens that's very sharp, but it doesn't have that qual that solid quality to them that I'm talking about here. It's sharp. It looks digitized, but it, it's missing that contrast, that sh special kind of look that you see in clothing, that you see in the shadows and the highlights. Sometimes lenses have more purple fringing than others. That's not a deal breaker for me, guys. You know, if I shoot a lens wide open and it has some purple fringing, it's fine. You know, um, you can correct that, but don't neglect the lens because it has a little bit of purple, purple fringing. Even the best of the best lenses when shooting chrome, you're going to experience some of that. So look at character. Don't sell your FTZ adapter. Some of the lenses really look at the, the look you get before you decide on just moving on and just selling all your F mount lenses. So this is why you should not sell. Your FTZ adapter and some of your F mount glass. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you agree. Let me know some of the things you look for in you know lenses. We got sharpness, we got the look, we got character. What are some of the characteristics you look for? And if there's some other stuff that I missed here, I forgot to mention this. Some of the lenses have this amazing uh, vignetting going on. The corners get a little dark, wide open. It's fine. I, I, I kind of like that. That's that's just added character to the lens, depending on what I'm shooting. But it it adds to a portrait. You know, some of these older F mount lenses have that vignetting going on, wide open, and it's really uh, visible in the image. So adds to character. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. This is Vahography. I'm Vahagan, your rock and roll photographer. We'll see you soon. Take it easy and rock and roll.